Now on BBC Two, Peter Purvis and Jessica Holm present the greatest dog show on earth. Hello and welcome to Crufts, where it's not the winning, but the taking part that counts for the 19,000 that dream the same dream. Now, there can only be one best in show, and of course at Crufts, it's the cream of British dogs that are competing. So how do you get to be simply the best? Getting to Crufts is the first hurdle. Only a pedigree dog registered with the Kennel Club can compete, and only then if it's qualified as a championship in the preceding year. Each of the breeds recognised by the Kennel Club belong to one of six groups, and these 25 breeds belong to the Terrier group. The 25 best of breed winners make it to the main ring to compete for the title Best in Group. Tomorrow, the other five group winners from the Hound, Toy, Utility, the Gun Dog and the Working Groups will join the Best in Group Terrier to compete for this magnificent Kettle Memorial Trophy and Crufts Best in Show. Well, that's how it's organised, but how on earth does a judge choose one dog over another? Tell me what it is that made you select this dog over all the other Border Terriers entered. Well, he does excel in type. It's very important when you're judging. You are judging to the standard. And you must get a dog that fits the standard. And standard always gives you the type of the dog. And he's a very, very good type of Border Terrier. He does excel in head properties. Um, I, I love his head. I think it's a, it's a real, it's supposed to be an otter head, and this is a lovely otter head. Strength of jaw, super set of teeth, lovely dark eye, super expression, nice neat little ears. Um, with a border cherry, you must be able to span them there, because they're supposed to go to ground. And if you had a dog there that, for example, had an absolutely beautiful head, but maybe not everything else was quite right, how precisely do you have to judge to the standard? Well, it depends what's in the class always. Sometimes you have to forgive things that you don't actually like because you haven't got anything that's really correct. So you have to, in your own mind, think which are the faults and failings that matter the least and which are the good bits of it that you really like. What happens as a judge if you're faced with a class where nothing pleases you? You feel simply awful and just want to go through the floor. But you have to find the dog with the most qualities that you're looking for um, and not really bad faults. I mean, you, you must, with this breed, never put up a bad head. Um, you must get as good movement as you can. Um, you must never put up one of these that's got great big round ribs because you're judging a working terrier and he has to go to ground. So if he's got great big ribs, he gets stuck like a cork in a bottle. <laughs> so you but this this is this is lovely. He's just right. You see, he's got the depth, so he's got plenty of room for his heart and his lungs. But he's he's just lovely there. With all that on your mind, do you actually have time to enjoy the judging? Um, sometimes um, you're concentrating so hard that you're not really aware of anything else. In fact, the need to concentrate and come up with the best answer that you can. But and you're we're not always right, but we do our best. <laughs> And you're delighted today? I'm delighted with him, yes. He got, he got rather sleepy when he came in for best of breed. He said, oh dear, but he, he, he came too in the end. But he's a lovely boy, aren't you? Eh? Yes, he is a lovely boy.
For the first time ever at Crufts 1997, challenge certificates were awarded to Parson Jack Russell Terriers. The best of breed has just been selected to great applause, and that bitch will now go forward to join all the other best of breeds in the Terrier group. These, of course, are the Earth Dogs, the Diggers, originally bred to control vermin, 25 breeds in the group. The West Highland White is the most popular in the group. And here you can see which have been most consistent breeds in the group. Welsh Terriers have won the most best in shows and also the most best in groups. But last year, the group was won not by a Welsh, but by an Airedale. Here's group judge Liz Cartledge's thoughts on judging at Crufts. It, it is a very special moment. A dog that has animation and terrier spirit as well as good looks and is presented and in good form and condition. Well, it has a very big crowd to start with and a big following and, and uh, the whole world knows about Crufts. They don't know about any other dog show that we run all through the year. Elizabeth Mattel leads the Norfolk Terrier, Betty, champion Krakner Call My Bluff, into the ring before withdrawing from the competition because Elizabeth is a close friend of this lady, our judge, Liz Cartledge. And Liz, as a breeder and exhibitor, was best known for Norfolk Terriers, but she obviously has a soft spot for Airedales, which was one of the eight dogs she selected for a closer look. Jockill Sweetie Pie, or three-year-old Sophie, is the latest in a long line of successful Airedales from the Jockill Kennel, but this is Sophie's first best of breed. The Airedale has a sort of aura about it, which persuades the Cogmaskenti to call it the King of the Terriers, and rightly so. A lady on the other end of the lead is Mary Swash, the Empress of the Airedale world. She turns out a new trump card every year. That's yes, an absolute beauty. So too is this little chap, champion Kinkim Ludwig. He's a two-and-a-half-year-old Cairn Terrier. Best of breed last year, as well as this, for Ron and Brenda Birch of Market Drayton in Shropshire. He's already taken the best in show at the Border Union show and is a real digging terrier. The original basic can, you can groom it till you're blue in the face. It'll still look at you, give a monster shake, and you're back where you started. <laughs> and thank heavens there's the judges like Mary Towers who can see the dog behind that devilish expression. The wire-haired fox terrier now, 22-month-old bitch, fair wire, pretty perfect, owned by Mrs Stansfield from just up the road in Dudley, West Midlands. Handled in the ring today by Andrew Westwood. It's her third best of breed. The man in the street in 1950s, his concept of what a terrier looked like was this fox terrier. Square built, smart as paint, shaped like a good class of hunter, ready to stand his corner against whoever wanted to throw down the gauntlet. Yes, standard terrier template, as is the Irish terrier. Champion Tuberisa Bo Venture Ard Gabba. Limey. Thank goodness he's known as Archie. He's handled by Peter Bell, owned by Margaret and Billy Semple. And it's a very fitting tribute, Mike, that uh, he should be here today for Margaret because sadly Billy died last week. No, I hadn't heard that, Peter. That's nasty news. If you can use the word elegant in the Terrier group, this lad really rather deserves it. Always presented to the judge in this superb outline by a real master of his art, Peter Bell. No, it's not the same dog. This is the Lakeland Terrier, Kilmarth Moonwalker, or Hobie. Another young chap, just 14 months old, handled by Hilary Barrett, her owners Ray and Lorna Walker from Pontefract. Incidentally, they almost didn't make it here because his entry was mislaid in the post. Lorna proved it had been posted, and so he was admitted, and here he's won the best of breed. Mm, she must have been very relieved to get in. If you look at a traditional terrier like this, Lakey, you can almost conjure up the terrain of the fells between Kendall and Cockermouth, can't you? It's sure hard as nails, agile, totally tireless. Now, I've got to say I like this little chap, champion Mason Paper Chase. Four-year-old Ross, of course, he's a Scottish terrier, owned by John and Susan Gaskell, Susan with him in the ring. Also uh, from Yorkshire, Rotherham this time, he's won three best in groups and one best in show in Leeds 1995. When I were a lad, Peter, this was called the Aberdeen Terrier, and to me that's that's totally apt. It's a dog that looks as if it had been hewn out of a chunk of granite from the Granite City. No nonsense about him. He'll go round the ring his way. 
One of my favourites here is this, the soft-coated Wheaton. This is Cougar, champion and Irish champion, Steve Lynn Blue Suede Shoes of Kariskai. He's five and a half. Sandy Tanner from Cheltenham is his owner. They've won six best-in shows at open shows. He's the record holder in CCs for the breed. So he should be. For me, this is the turn-up of the whole group, judged in the breed ring by a man who boasts a better dog pedigree than most of us. This has got to be in the frame at the end. So too probably this young lady. Welsh Terriers have been hugely successful over the years, as we've said. Two and a half year old Amy has the dignified kennel name of champion Saradon Sweet Inspiration of Tilsa. She's owned by Miss Alex Whitman of Ilford in Essex, and Andrew Hunt is the handler in the ring. Yep, almost every year for the last five years, you and I have watched one of these get to the top of the Crufts Pyramid. And rightly so. It's a neat, it's a workmanlike dog, smashing family dog, cheerful character with a pedigree that comes right out of the mists of Celtic Britain. Mm, pure miniature of the Airedale, isn't mm -hmm. it? Well, 24 dogs actually came under Liz Cartledge's scrutiny, and now comes the moment of truth. One of these eight will go on to represent the Terriers in Sunday's Best in Show. And I should think by this time Liz Cartledge was pretty sure she knew what she was going to select, but just cast an eye over them all one more time before walking deliberately over to select it to my surprise, I must say, the Cairn. But he's such a jolly little chap, Liz Ludwig. Look at him, wonderful. First prize, wonderful moment for Ron Birch. And a wonderful moment for the judge who put him into the ring. And for Cougar, the reserve, well, this was your favourite of the group, Soft Cozy Wheaton takes the reserve for Sandy Tanner. And group three, well, it's the Welsh, another success for the Welsh Terrier, Amy with Alex Whitman. And the Irish Terrier is in fourth place. Good old Archie for Margaret Sackley. Uh, it's a lovely selection of four Terriers there. The Cairn, the odd one out, doesn't really fit the template, but what a smashing little chap. And I've got to say, he doesn't seem to care less, does he? He cut his leg on that box. <laughs> Peter James, the new chairman of the Kennel Club, presenting the trophy. And there's Ludwig. He doesn't even know he's the winner. Well, that was the cream of British Terriers in the group here at Crufts in 1997. But, of course, there are Terriers bred all over Europe, many of which would be only too eager to come and compete here. So how do the overseas visitors here at Crufts feel about the possibilities of changes in our quarantine regulations? Yevgeny Yaroselamsky, you're from the Russian Kennel Club and Stepan Shenko from the Slovenian. What difference would it make to you both if you could actually bring dogs here to Crufts? I hope it would be a really international exchange of our experience. And Stefan? Yes, I think so. It would be a great experience for us uh, to make a competition with the British dogs. Uh, in fact, we imported many dogs from Great Britain and uh, we have a high standard in some breeds. So it would be uh, very interesting to see the competition between these who are here today and what we have at home. Greg Eva from the Kennel Union of South Africa. What about you? Would you come here with show dogs? Oh, definitely, if we had the chance. I think it's the one thing that we've all been waiting for, that we can come and show our dogs here. Absolutely great. And what about the reverse, dogs coming from the UK to compete in South Africa? No problem in coming to South Africa as long as they have their shots. That's the big thing. That was the overseas perspective, but of course there are many British breeders and exhibitors who would also like freer access to the continent. Bill O'Loughlin is one of this country's best-known Basset breeders. What difference would it make to you if quarantine regulations were relaxed? It would make an enormous difference. Uh, obviously the breeders in Europe have access to American lines much more easily than we do. Uh, the Bassets that I brought home with me at the end of the 80s, which have produced my winning stock today, are a combination of English bloodlines exported to Europe combined with American bloodlines, so they're actually bred in Holland. Um, if I could have continual access to those bloodlines, um, it would give me a chance to uh, prevent the, the thing closing in in England. Would you go to Europe to show? I certainly would. Uh, there's a lot of competition in Europe. Uh, it would do British breeders in general a lot of good to go to, to Europe uh, and show against the stock that they have there, some of which are of a slightly different type, but they certainly have merit. And it would be very good, I think, for the British dog game to have European breeders showing here. 
So that's one side of the argument. Plenty of reasons, both from overseas visitors and, of course, from our own breeders and exhibitors, for changing our quarantine regulations. But there is quite another side, and we'll be looking at that in tomorrow night's programme. You're the best thing I ever had. You can get to hug them a lot and they're just so sweet, so it's a mate and I'm glad to have them. He's just a good mate, really. Aren't you, Vernon? Because they're so cute. Hounds live to hunt and they come in all shapes and sizes, from the giant stature of the Irish wolfhound and the speed of the greyhound to the low-slung solid basset hound ploughing its way across country. In this group, the elegance of the show greyhound has contributed to their best in show success. They've certainly had the most. But it's the Afghan hound that's actually taken the most groups. Although here at Crufts last year, the elk hound topped the lot. Gene Lanning's judging, so what's it going to feel like? There is nothing like Crofts. It is the greatest show in the world, and uh, the atmosphere is just electric for exhibitors and judges. It's just as exciting each time I judge. It's really lovely. Well, the hound group at the moment is one of the strongest we have in this country, so I, with a bit of luck, I'm going to have some really top-class dogs out there, and I should probably have to be making some very close decisions. The last of the 27 breeds in the hound group entering the ring for Jean Lanning judging. She whittled them down to a final eight and first up champion Tejas Conquistador, Riot. She's a five-year-old Afghan bitch who was bred by the Keelans and came to Mike Gadsby from co-owner Anita Doe three years ago. Can you believe it? With a terrible coat problem. No sign of that now. She was top hound in 96 and best of breed at Crufts last year. The relationship between these two, Mike, he really gets the best out of her, doesn't he? Absolutely right. Poetry in motion. If ever man and dog moved as one, you're looking at it now. It's a real pleasure to see teamwork like this, an expression which would quell a riot and a spring in her step like Sally Gunnell. Blue is a two-year-old basset hound, champion Swithel and Blue Jeans, bred and owned by Phil and Joe Freer, Phil handling here today. He was last year's top basset hound and also the pet plan junior of the year, going best in show at Scottish Kennel Club back last autumn. They are such solid and yet very lively dogs, aren't they, Mike? Uh, they are extreme, aren't they? They're low-slung dog with a style of going which totally defies the laws of nature but it would force a smile out of the most pernickety purist with that face. This has got to end up in the final lineup. Uh, so there's Mike's tip. <laughs> This three-year-old beagle has had a glittering show career so far. Bred by Melanie Spavin and owned and handled by Andrew Brace, Mikey, or champion Dialine Tolliver of Tragband, has won nine championship show hound groups and two best in shows. He also won the champion stakes final in January. Above all, Andrew says he's a joy to live with. It's even money to me. Who's working harder out there, the handler or the dog? This really is one of the most successful dogs of the mid-90s. Royally bred and proving that top breeders will breed top quality, both physically and mentally, every time. Owner Julie Stephen Smith describes this Borzoi, Gus, or champion Starborough Gorset Red Banner, as a bit of a Cinderella. He was apparently returned to breeder Lorraine Marchant at six months old as unmanageable, but with careful handling, he's blossomed into the champion that we see today, one with 19 challenge certificates. A truly classic outline. Whoever exercises this dog must be very fit themselves. Borzois have got an air of the aristocrat about them. Their name in Russian is Swift. They came to Britain first when the Tsar gave one to our Queen. This is James, champion Bronya Conquistador. He's a veteran long-haired dachshund who's no stranger to the big ring. He was bred and is owned and handled by Fran Mitchell and has a grand total of 36 challenge certificates. He was the top long-haired dachshund in 95 and 96 and, more importantly, Mike, also the top sire. Well, there he goes. The, the ranks of the Daxi breeders, they've got devotees of enormous staying powers. Year in, year out, we watch them produce these glamorous coats on beautifully proportioned dogs. He's a real picture slide down the Dachshund scale and you arrive at the miniature wire hair. This young bitch is Blitz, Drake's Leet Hups and Downs, it's a lovely name, bred and owned and handled by Jeff Horswell. She won her first challenge certificate today, apparently she's a great rabbiter at home. Dax has come for me, obviously, in six separate breeds. 
but this variety stands out as the real character and obviously from the noise from the audience she's got a very sizable fan club out there watching i love the movement those little mm. legs going 19 to the dozen i believe every word about being a good rabbiter at home mm. Dag McHenis Pordham imported this magnificent Irish wolfhound from Gary Janssen's in Belgium. Shadow of Kilmara is a two-and-a-half-year-old dog who also won his first challenge certificate today. Dagmar was very keen to have Shadow as he goes back on both sides of his pedigree to her famous dog, Solstrand Caspar, who won best of breed here at Crufts back in the 80s. The tallest dog in the whole show, thankfully handled by a lady who can match his stride. I haven't realised where this chap had come into the country from, but having cleared out the wolves in Ireland, apparently they shipped him over to Belgium to sort out Brussels as well. <laughs> Finally, to a favourite of mine, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendien. This young man was bred and is owned and handled by Viv Phillips. Cedric is a real character who can't bear to be separated from his mummy. His official title, Debouché C'est Ça. 25 years ago, the Petit hadn't crossed the channel. Today, we're watching this young lad storm round it as if he owned the ring. Now, Jean Lanning, a very serious look there as she takes... A final glance down this eight, some of the top hounds in the UK and a difficult decision, I'm sure. Glancing again at the Afghan, the Basset and the Beagle at that far end. Now this looks like... No, perhaps not. I thought we had a more purposeful march there. Oh, and there it is! What a surprise! It's the Petit Basset Griffon Vendia who takes the group. Debouchet Cesar winning his first CC today. In group two, the famous beagle, Mikey with Andrew Brace. And group three, Riot, Mike Gadsby's gorgeous Afghan. And finally, the Borzoi, Gus, chasing his tail in excitement. But topping the hound group for 1997, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendien. What a win. And somebody I know is almost lost for words, <laughs> aren't you? Oh, it's a smasher. He's my baby. <laughs> he's my life. I love him. All he means to me, really, is that he's dropped in gorgeous and he loves me. Well, with two groups already judged, that means the show here is well underway, but it also means it's time for you to become a winner with our competition. All you have to do is identify which of the following three dogs was best in show here at Crofts last year. Was it A, the Welsh Terrier, B, the Cocker Spaniel, or C, the Irish Setter? The number to ring is 0891 114499. Lines are open now and will close tomorrow at midnight. The winner will be selected at random from the correct entries and will receive two pairs of tickets for Best in Show 1998, plus being entertained for lunch by the Kennel Club and given a guided tour of Crufts, including a look behind the scenes and how we put our programmes together. And we'll give you the results of the competition in our fourth programme on Sunday. And that's not tomorrow, that's a week tomorrow. And if you're 16 or under, please remember, do get permission before you ring. Now, you can also find the information about the competition on the BBC's own website on the internet. It also has lots of information about the programme, so I'll give you the address of our website, together with the number for the competition again at the end of the programme. But did you know that from our website, you can also access the Kennel Club's own website with lots of information about the breeds, the way Crofts is organised and so on. And also, there's a full updated results service on a regular basis. And also from our website, did you know you could access the virtual dog show? The what? I hear you ask. Yeah, exactly. The virtual dog show. There is such a thing. People send in their photographs, put them on the internet, and then judged on the internet. Will it catch on, I ask myself? Well, I'm not so sure. I must say, I prefer the real thing. Let's have a look at the toy group. Toy dogs make superb companions. They might be pint-sized, but they have huge personalities, and the variety of these 21 breeds is quite breathtaking. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is the most popular dog in the group, and it's also the breed that's won the most best in shows. 
The top group winner is the Little Pekingese with its glamorous and profuse coat. But last year it was a papillon which took the group. Joyce Mann is judging this year. What does Crufts mean to her? It's the largest show in the world. Finest dogs are here today. There's no question about that. There's an atmosphere that's no matter where you judge all over the world. You don't get that atmosphere. It's just a something here that you don't get elsewhere. In other words, the creme de la creme. It's magical, absolutely magical. The toy is one of the smaller groups, and Michael Quinney joins me to commentate today. And Just 20 best of breeds lined up for Judge Joyce Mann. And Joyce's first cut included this Bichon Frise, the first champion that John and Maureen Reynolds have bred and owned. So a real thrill that she won her third CC today at Crufts. Fonavar Miss Kitty, or Misky for short, is a two and a half year old bitch who's apparently a bit of a Houdini at home. I wish she just, yes. Certainly a breed that's got a tremendous character, making the most delightful companions. Ice white with a coat that does need a lot of care. Certainly gleaming in the big ring today, anyway. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the most popular breed in the toy group. Tri-Rain Alexius the Great won his first CC here at Crufts today for owner breeder Pam Rayner from High Wycombe. Apparently Hartley sleeps in her bed and snores. Now, he's won a reserve CC under Joyce Mann, so we know she likes him. As Joyce is a very consistent judge, and this little dog is stepping out, showing his deep ruby colour on a white background. The little lion dog, or Lurchen, champion Bolion, Brahms and Liszt, bred by George Hookway and owned by Peter Scarth and Mike Gaunt. Peter showing today. Now, I remember this little dog, Mozart, because he was pulled out in the final lineup for the toy group in 1996. Yes, and, of course, Jessica, I was the judge, and he's looking much the same. A year's made no difference to him, stepping away there, telling us all he's been there before. They look like such characters. And they are tremendous characters. Ellie is only 18 months old, more properly titled champion Aviat Cracklin' Rosie Snow Goose. She was bred by Mrs. Hemsley and is owned by Vicky Herriot, shown by Chris Ripshire today. Ellie is related to champion Snow Goose First Love, who was reserving the group here in 1995, I think? Yes, you're right, yes. There's a lot of very famous names you're mentioning there, and this little dog looks terribly special to me. Ice white and a lovely, lovely level top line carrying herself across the ring, showing her silky coat. What a famous little show dog this one is. The Papillon, Disney champion Tussolud storyteller, topped the lot for Kay Stewart last year by winning this group. And with 24 challenge certificates now, he's had a marvellous year in the ring. Do you think he could do it again? Well, that we're not sure of. Joyce will make that decision, but I would imagine somehow or other he'll get a second look. Love little dog, looking like a butterfly with his ears and profuse coat. That is a characteristic, isn't it? The wide set ears like a butterfly with all the coat hanging from That's them. That's right, profuse feathering. Just Coffee. like this Pekingese, Peter oh. Purvis will be melting in his seat right now, his favourite in the group. Barry is a two-and-a-half-year-old dog champion since Sanjo Grand Finale at Yaki. He was peak of the year in 1996 for owners Albert Easton and Philip Martin. I have a special interest in him because I gave him his first ever certificate and he has had a tremendously successful career. Will have to be looked at again, I'm sure, today. Well, if I had to pick a favourite, it would be hard to get past this Pomeranian, the neat, chunky shape, and they have such a game nature. There's even one that goes to our local agility class. This is Coco, champion Cradar Military Tattoo, who at just two and a half years old has ten challenge certificates for owner breeder Pauline Wallace. Stepping out there, showing a lovely foxy expression. He too has a standoffish coat and a tail that's carried well over his back. Just like a little teddy bear. Last but by no means least is the 1996 top toy dog and top dog all breeds, Justin Champion Osmillion Mystification, bred, owned and shown to gleaming perfection by Osman Samija. I judge this little dog in this toy group a while ago when he just become a champion. He has now won 51 champion certificates and is a great dog with a lot of quality and I'm quite sure will command a lot of attention today. Beautiful colouring. 
now Joyce Mann refreshing her memory with another look an enormously experienced judge isn't she Michael? Yes and very consistent and looking very elegant as she walks looking at her final choice right down to the far end of the line there oh no hesitation oh, Justin champion of million mystification that Yorkshire Terrier adds Crufts 1997 toy group to his impressive list of wins for owner Osman Samija uh, Justin's loving this. Loving every moment, and his owner must be so proud because not only has he bred this very famous little dog, but generations of Yorkshire Terriers behind him. And group two to the sturdy little Pekingese, Barry, delighting Albert Easton, who's handling him today. All the way from Scotland, and yet again, another very famous and consistent breeder. Champion to salute storyteller, the famous little Papillon, has to be content with group three this year. We didn't do badly, Jessica, did we? Standing there, having been there before, looking superb. And group four, Hartley, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Well done. Always a great favourite of mine. A lovely breed. But the 1997 Crufts Toy Group winner is Justin Champion's Million Mystification. He looks gorgeous, doesn't he, Michael? Simply absolutely gorgeous. And I hope you can see the three shades of tan coming from his face, which is called a fall. Uh, his beautiful coat hanging to the floor, below the floor of a cold steel blue. And here we've got Ronnie Irving coming in, introducing David Merriam, chairman of the board of directors of the American Kennel Club, to make the presentation to Osman Samija. Joyce Mann looking absolutely chopped to bits with her group winner, isn't she? I'm sure she is. A breed that we know that Joyce has spent all her life living with and enjoying. Doesn't so, he look magnificent? He does. So, it's Justin who takes the group. But the most important thing you must remember about Crufts is that it actually doesn't matter where you come in the League of Winners, it's just being here that counts. journey it storms very rough crossing Kira travel fine yes she travelled very well a bit tired oh yes to qualify for it was an honor I've won with both my dogs, except for this morning when I got up very early and I had a disaster with my underwear. Well, they're very old and they're inside out and they're very uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm not going to take them off again. <laughs> not if I win with this one. <laughs> um, I normally have a baby carrier, but I forgot it today. It saves his legs. <laughs> can certainly be exhausting but ultimately everybody here has the same goal well there are thousands more people who'll still be making the trek to be part of this great show tomorrow but that's all we've got for you for tonight we've shown you the winners of the first three groups so join us tomorrow for the utility gun dog and working groups and of course the ultimate competition and climax of crafts 97 the best in show good night And you can see that final day of Crufts 97 tomorrow at 7 o'clock here on BBC Two. Genuine film of a World War II secret agent. Train 1186 derailed near V-26.